What up, what up, what up? Welcome to any old podcast. This is your boy, Brandon. Yo, 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 it's your boy, Mike Free. Hey, first off, subscribe to us from wherever you're uh, listening and watching us. Uh, follow Second us. of all, we got a special guest. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, get, 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 get you in there. I'm going to get you in there. Follow, follow, us, on no follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And as always, you can contact us um, via email at podcast at gmail.com. All right, so if you didn't hear the ignorance, <laughs> um, we do have a, a, a special guest. The boy mm-hmm. Truth is in transit from uh, from Connecticut. He had to go up to Connecticut for a wedding or something like that. He's on his way down. Um, but we do have a, a special guest, my boy A. Dot Young, a.k.a. Sure. The Mad Fanatic, a.k.a. Jimmy Soul, a.k.a. Druzy. Choose me. Yo, yo, yo. CT in the building, man. What's popping? We out here. Hey, so what's up? How how y'all week go this week? What's up? My week has been uh I'll let I'll I'll let the guests go. Great, as usual. You know what I mean? I've been faced with trials and tribulations, but they make me stronger. You feel me? They make me stronger. I've been dealing with it. Back pain. I got the backyotomy on deck. Gonna go see the chiropractor, but you got the backyard. Uh, uh, uh. Rosy dozy. Oh man, that that good old Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> how's uh how's your week, Mike? Oh uh, well, got to another accident. Another accident? Yeah, and this time Mo and Amber was in the car with me. I didn't I didn't do anything. My my car was parked. We watched the accident happen. You watched the accident happen. Yeah, we you parked in the car. We was we, I was I had just finished pumping gas. We was in Greenwich. I had just came from picking them up from New York. Mm-hmm. Trying to get gas in Greenwich, right? So I'm 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 done pumping gas. We get in the car, put my seatbelt on. We about to leave. I like I'm about to start the car and everything. Dude with a black truck. Oh, okay. He tried to squeeze in. This little space, it was a it was a tight uh gas station too. He tried to squeeze in. Mm-hmm. But he came in through the side of my car. And oh. like, we watched it. And I'm I honked the horn, y'all. Still kept going. Scraped my whole side yeah. junk up. He had uh insurance and all oh, that. Yeah, he had insurance and uh it's in the shop right now. <laughs> Get it oh. As we're talking. I know that's right. Uh, and he paid for everything. That's a good thing. Yo, my junk disappeared for mad long. You were frozen for mad long. Your Wi-Fi trash. Oh, yo, my week was uh was good. Um, I I don't know what what I did last week. (laughs) Blur. Um, I know I did go up to Stone Mountain workout on Sunday. I missed those. I ain't gonna lie, I missed those. Yeah, that's kind of dope. Um, my daughter's driving. Ooh, I seen that. I seen that. She's definitely like driving on the highway, and uh, Literally. yeah, we're learning lessons as we go. Like she, like we had like a yield sign, and and the traffic was coming, and she <laughs> she thought the yield mean don't stop. And I'm oh, like, oh, 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 oh. oh. You know? <laughs> that could have got bad. That could have got. Could have got bad, but it's always a learning a learning uh lesson. You know what I'm saying? So word, word. good. She did good. <laughs> That's so good. Good job, Dustin. Good job. Good job. Good. So, um, yeah. So we were on COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. Cam, Cam Newton got COVID, man. Yeah. So Cam yeah. and he and does. our president got COVID. He does. He does oh, have yeah. and him too. He does <laughs> have COVID nineteen. You know, we kind of on the back burner for a little bit until we get it situated. Mm. But y'all gonna catch you know. it all this weekend. Well, who are they playing? They play- I don't know. I, I don't know if you've been playing. Like, I don't even know what's going to happen. They playing. We're supposed, huh? we, we're supposed to be playing the Chiefs. You know who they playing? I thought they playing. You know who they playing? Tonight. I'm not talking about tonight. I'm talking about Sunday. Oh, yeah. Broncos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We yeah. playing on Sunday. I know that. Yo, y'all be lucking up, man. Y'all just beat up on the the, the, the Jets. Now you now you. <laughs> That's like normal, though. That's normal. The Patriots when they about to be trash. 
Yo, everybody lucky though. We ain't got our star quarterback. We don't have Bob Miller. We don't have our number one receiver. We don't have our number one corner. We don't have <laughs> like everybody. What's everybody lucky. About? We don't have Philip Lindsay. We don't got mad people. <laughs> but Drew Lock might be coming back this week though. So fingers He's crossed. He's stupid, man. man. He's stupid. Yo, um, we didn't talk about the debate. What What was your your thoughts on the debate, Mike? Listen, man, I think the debate, my opinion, was set up to make certain people with the mindset to not even want to vote because it was so crazy. Mm. I think it was set up purposely like that. And different spin, huh? That's what I think. I think they set it up purposely on that on purpose. Oh, let's get crazy. Let's talk crap to So people who got that mindset be like, I don't even want to vote no more. I don't even care. If mm. they don't vote, then guess who gets to vote? Who? King Trump? Whoa, hold on now. King Trump? <laughs> King Trump gets to vote? Who gets to vote, man? Donald J. Punk. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> Listen, they got me no, that's how he got. That's how he won last time. They got nope. me that's what I'm saying. The way there, fam. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Hey, what? Like, what I'm y'all, what y'all think there. about it? What y'all think about? Because that's just my thoughts on. The I'm one, I must be one of them people. I'm ninety percent there. Like, see, I'm either voting third party or I'm not see? even showing up for this. They got you, man. They their plan worked. Yo, I actually watched um, a documentary on Netflix about um, voting. About you know, if, I think it was called like "Do Your Vote Count" or something like that. Right, right. And it made me think like not voting. Oof. Not the solution. Like not voting isn't helping anything. You get what I'm that saying? Was certainly their goal with that movie. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I said that was certainly the goal with that movie was to make you feel that way. You don't think so? No, I know that was the goal. The goal was definitely to make you feel like, yo, your vote matters. Make sure you go out there and vote. No, yeah, no, no. I get it. But do you think not voting helps anything? I don't know. Not necessarily, but I also think that the I don't believe in the two party system at all. Yeah. And I and I believe that the corruption, the 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 kind of corruption that we don't that we don't like, it's like it's not fixable with the two they, they allow to be the two. I don't think. I think that it's a certain way they want the system to run it to be ran, like certain fundamental aspects of the system that they're not willing to change that they're not even going to let a candidate that's not going to conform in those ways to that system even be in the two that we get to choose from so it's Mm -hmm. like no matter what this system is upheld and i don't care so much about that system because honestly i even think that voting up for like aldermen and mayor and like sheriff and judges and and house representatives and state representatives is like way more important than the president. Of course. Yeah, hell yeah. The president. I so I don't think don't vote at all for anything is the solution. But I think in this particular case with these two presidents as choices, we got three choices. Hold on. Yeah. What's the third one? yeah. Do we really got three? No, yeah. Jim Jenison. Jen Jenison. You know what I'm saying I might vote for her. I told you that, but. Because the third party is not unified, she's not in the in the in the uh, election. I mean, in the debates, like it, it's a whole bunch of third party candidates. It's only the two as the major like Democrat Republican ones. So it's like they say that third party candidate is gonna get like two percent type shit, like nothing crazy. So I'm like, some people argue you're wasting your vote if you do that. But part of me is like, I might do it just so you know that I'm not about to just vote for whoever you put in front of me with these two people. But then again, what does that matter either way? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But it, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm I'm real disappointed in, in the two candidates we have. Yeah. Just not even on so much as a policy, like not even so much on, on just their policies. It's just, it's two people whose characters are suspect. You know what I mean? And their demeanors, like how they... <laughs> How they speak, they're just not good leaders, in my opinion. Either one of them are not qualified. Like, I wouldn't ha- elect them captain of my football team. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can't be the leader of the country in a country as powerful and influential as America, and you couldn't lead. Like, you wouldn't be class president. You know what I'm saying? 
Mm. Mad horns. Mad horns. Yeah. I think um I think that we need to take this time and learn about that third party candidate. Yeah. That's what I, I mean, do. I did some research into her to Joe Jorgensen. Yeah. All her policies align with mine pretty much. I mean, what is she? I, uh, uh, libertarian. Libertarian. So yeah. what, is, what is that? I mean, she had, there was a sign that was like, yo, smoke your weed, marry who you want, keep your money, keep your guns. <laughs> like, it was like, basically do what you want. Perfect. I, I like it. I like it already. I was I like, like it already. I'm fine with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but for the most part, um, I, I forgot. I felt like it was a strong stance on abortion. Like I think it was like have abortions if you want. And even that one, I, I kind of feel like I don't know how I feel about it because I've grown up in a world where that's always been um, systematically okay. Like it's not mm-hmm. ever been committed con- considered a crime. You know what I mean? I grew up in a world where, where it wasn't. So it's so normal for people that people are like, well, because it's always been an option, they don't even think twice about it. It's almost like how we eat steak and meat and stuff. You know what I mean? Because it's normalized, we don't say, damn, you're eating a freaking thing? Like, that was a person like thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because it's so normal for us. Which, and and for, to, for interest of transparency, I do eat mad steak. I'm not saying it as a person like that, but I'm saying if I grew up in a world where that wasn't normal, would I think it was normal? You know what I'm saying? So as far as abortion goes, I'm like, I feel like I would have rather grown up in a world where like it's a bigger crime to kill a, a not fully formed, like cancel that thing from being born than oh it should God. be to like or take a piece bare, of candy off a shelf. You know or what I'm saying? at bare, bare minimum, a bigger deal. You know what I'm saying? I I, I think, and and I said this before, I had an abortion when I was younger or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, um, it was traumatic to me. You know what I'm saying? I stayed in there. I did. I went through the whole process with um, with my wife or whatever. And I wouldn't never do it again because it was traumatic. It was, you know, it was a beating. It was a heart beating. No matter how small that <laughs> that chunk was, it was like little flutters. You know, you knew it was some life in there. Yeah. Um, and then we, you know, obviously we still went through with it. But um, even if it was like a bigger deal, like they, if they made it like a really, really big decision you had to make, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it'd be, it'd be better. Because it did get, it, did, it is normalized now. You know, people just, you know, go get them just to go get them at this point. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I it's don't. A lot, it's a lot of things. It seems like it makes it like, like you don't have to hold yourself accountable. The accountability is one of the things. It's like, like I can see if you see. That's the other thing. There's, there's, there's nuance. There's gray areas. Like, okay, if you was raped by a homeless person, or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Choice. Yeah, definitely. Maybe I feel a little more like, yeah, yeah. That that seems like a situation where it should be your choice. I guess. Um, but then I hear situations where it's like you was out here having unprotected sex, man. You was trying to do what adults do. Now you got to be an adult. You know what I'm saying? Like, where is the accountability? And it's like, I don't got to be accountable because the government created some thing where it could just destroy the life. Like it never happened. You know what I mean? And I'm like, don't get it twisted. I mean, I may have, I may have, you know what I mean? Participated in plan B pills before, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not pretending I'm <laughs> like, I'm, I'm part of the problem. You feel me? But, um, but I do feel like the people pushing for the more compassion for life. Um, I think they're on the right side of where we're going to end up as we continue to evolve. You know what I mean? Even vegans, like, Part of me is like, eh, circle of life. You're going to turn to grass, turn to the dirt. Everything balances out. There's insects that need to eat that stuff. You know what I mean? It's a whole bunch deeper than the life. Even even <laughs> plant life. I'm like, they have veins. They have consciousness. Mm. So it's it's loaded. But I feel like, hey, you are, t- you do make some points when you talk about like, you're going and grabbing like a, a animal that you can see screaming and hurting and like chopping his neck off. And it's just oh. like, eh. I kind of get what you're saying. Maybe we should have more compassion than we choosing that. We like looking the other way, like, nah, I don't want to think about all that. So I can continue to eat my shit. 
You know what I mean? Or I don't want to think about all that. So I, I can't get this abortion without feeling bad. It's like the consciousness, the more we become more and more aware of everything suffering and compassionate about it, the more we're going to be like Buddhas out here for real. <laughs> we're going to be monks, all of us. Oh, uh, yeah, that's definitely wild. That's definitely yeah. wild. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm I don't considering know. going vegan, yo. <laughs> yo, I went vegan for f- th- four weeks or maybe. How was it? It was um, it was definitely um, it was definitely weird trying to figure out what to eat, and, you know, because I kind of go, I went go uh, cold turkey, so we were so we were um definitely looking for you know different you know Andrea always looking for different um you know meals and stuff like that, and it was weird. I was like, <laughs> I t- I think I started like frying tofu <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> trying to put bread on it and everything make it look like some uh chicken nuggets or something like that <laughs> and, and, uh, oh man but um man, that but, junk yeah. is fugazi bro tofu that whole lifestyle that whole palate <laughs> like all the stuff they want us to eat is ridiculous i don't <laughs> yeah. know man oh, yeah I, I, definitely food, went, I definitely went and got like a burger on, on week four I was like, yo, <laughs> could it do it? That, son. I went all the way left too with, with the McDonald's. With the, <laughs> he chose McDonald's to go to. to cook it fresh. You know, you're going left when you go to McDonald's and say, yo, cook it fresh. And yeah, so that's what I did. And then it was over ever since then. I've been eating meat again. <laughs> hey, at least you tried it. Yeah. I tried it. That joint was, that joint was rough. That joint was rough. How long did you, how long did, did you go? Uh, less than 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was a pescatarian. That was kid. hard, man. Pescatarian is the easiest one to me. Yeah, you can still eat fish. Yeah, like that's and, and, and the Virgo, like the, this the thing with, with the vegan stuff, it just goes like eight steps too far for me. Like, yo, now I can't wear leather sneakers. I can't eat pizza. Like nobody had to die for me to eat the pizza, fam. They just milked them. Well, they milked them too aggressively. I mean, what's um, what's pepperoni? Ain't that come from something? Is that pork or something? I'm talking about a cheese pizza brand. Nah, nigga, nobody eats cheese pizza. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, pizza at the brick oven, cheese pizza. To that, yo, I'm surprised brick. homie ain't go there, yo. The brick oven, just pizza cheese. At the though? brick oven is on um, what is it? In the Elm Street house. How and yeah, how, uh, how how and L L okay, how and L in the corner over there by the halfway house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. junk is like a they got mad things of wood outside because yep. they got the wood burning oven. Don't let them get there. Baby <laughs> cheese pizza is is like I can eat this without no toppings. It's real and and Zuparti's, which is my favorite pizza. I don't feel that way. <laughs> I feel like their cheese is just all right. I need the top. They meat lovers. Mm. Oof. Yeah, Oof. they they, they, they top is crazy. Yeah, I can't eat just cheese. I mean, eh, I wouldn't prefer it. That brick oven one though. Ooh. Brick oven is fire. Brick oven is fire. So, Mike, what was what was the other thing we was we was gonna uh um talk about? Did we talk about Tory Lanez already? Nah. About him being outside and oh man, yeah. What happened? When he was outside. I mean, he just out. He was out in the club. He out in Jersey. The he know he knows something we don't know. He just out like. What you mean? Because nobody's doing nothing to him. <laughs> that well, and no doing nothing to him, and the law not doing yeah. nothing. <laughs> he just out here. I'm, I'm, you didn't get arrested. You don't. You didn't hear in the beginning. Everybody was complaining that she didn't snitch on him. That she said he was straight. Like she wouldn't. Like basically wouldn't she, testify against him. She protected him so he couldn't get charges brought against him. And you can't double jeopardy and change it. I don't think. I don't think he not. said bail or something. Double jeopardy. Yeah, yeah, I thought he got. Uh-huh. A, I thought he got. I thought, I, I thought he got arrested. And he yeah. said thirty thousand dollar bail. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how true it is, but that's what that's what I've heard. Yeah, he got arrested in uh for possession of a gun or some junk. Mm. And then they were trying to figure out all all that mess that was going on. Yeah. But uh. he outside looking like plies. <laughs> <laughs> well, plies always outside. That boy be I'll be watching his videos, he be having me dying. 
Mm. Shout out Plies, man. Plies is so what, what, what was the name of that artist you just sent me on on, on Facebook? I think Drew, Drewzy. Oh, I don't know. I know the name of the song. Oh, his name is something Tom McDonald. Mm. Tom What's McDonald. that about? He out here with that white power. <laughs> oh, that's what you were talking about. Yeah. Okay. He was fired though. Like he was. He was fired. I think no. the hook was trash. It reminded me, of, like it reminded think, me of Eminem. The hook reminded me of Eminem, like older Eminem, like the, you know what I mean. How he be some doing shady Eminem stuff. or yeah, yeah, some shady. Okay, Eminem. Yeah. and uh, what he was saying was definitely thought provoking. He was saying a lot of the stuff like, "Oh, people are too sensitive. They got issues with everything." Literally, like, stupid half of the issues y'all got. We whining about this, whining about that. He was basically talking about victims. But at the same time, a lot of the stuff he said, it was definitely slanted a little bit. It was definitely slanted a little bit towards the shut up, minorities. Don't hear your bullshit. <laughs> had a little bit of that in there, y'all. Had a little bit of the lack of compassion. I was telling Brandon, I'm like, yo, I feel like for some reason, I felt like that's a little bit what Candace Owen does. It's like, it lacks <laughs> It's like she, girl she, right there. She might make a lot of great points, and low key, she wants black people to advance, but she lacks a lot of compassion. She lacks yeah, that compassion, is, compassion for people to receive what she's saying. Yeah, he definitely lacked. The <laughs> but he wasn't trying to get the compassion anyway. He was trying to be uh, shocking off, like trolling, like how these dudes be doing. They say all the. What this is? Oh my god! He's saying Yo, it I, low, key, low key, I be thinking people want to say that though. No, they definitely do. Mad people want to say that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, especially white people that don't want to hear about that. Feel like it's white shaming. You know what I mean? <laughs> they feel like, damn, you talking about racism, and it must be my fault. My bad. Whatever, man. What what I what did I do? Like the white guilt part of them. That's like I I, don't, I ain't here for this. Um, they definitely don't want to hear it for sure. Yo, how should how should they feel though? Like the people that you know, obviously they had nothing to do with nothing. Have compassion. Niggas is just born. Just have compassion. The defense mechanism. The problem is because they feel like we're. Well, maybe some people are making them also feel this way, but for some reason there's a ownership of like, I'm blaming you for it. You know what I mean? And it's like your defense mechanism is like, I didn't do this. What you coming at me for? I don't want to hear that shit. So now you dismiss the whole idea of, of there's anything, any oppression at all. There's anything that's being that's happening that's still wrong. There's any subtle biases and just just ways you discriminate yourself. You know what I mean? You may not even really evaluate yourself honestly because you've already been put on defense because you felt like they were attacking you. You felt attacked. You know what I mean? Mm. I think that's what, <laughs> where the disconnect happens. You can't. You can't feel like you're on the defense ever. In the, in the, you know what I mean? I don't know, man. I, I, I get what you're saying, but I, I don't know. What if it was, all right, so let's have empathy for those people. Right. What if it was us? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Getting blamed for everything and we had nothing to do with it. You get what oh, I'm saying? Who? This is the thing. This is what I'm saying. This is where the disconnect is happening, because who is blaming them for anything? Whatever the inc- whatever the uh, in- you know the incident that happened with them that this came about. Whatever it could be, like a conversation or something, or you know something personal obviously happened. You know what I'm saying? And then they got defensive, or they seen something online, and and it seems like you know. Uh, the white man this, the white man that. And he's like 20 years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Grew up with heroes that's black. Probably um, don't have that hatred in their mind, but they keep getting, you know, the blame or getting the uh, the abuse online. I just, you know, how 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 is he supposed to feel? You get what I'm saying? Kind of. Um, I definitely don't like that statement when people say the white man. But at the same time, I don't necessarily hear that statement very often, especially not online. I think okay. that might be blown out of proportion. Like, 
I think there's a lot more reaching to feel attacked than there is being attacked. You know what I'm saying? I think there's a need to be a victim on all human beings. <laughs> like the ego has a need to be offended. So I think um, there's a reach for, I felt like it was coming at me. I felt like that was, I'm receiving that and they might not have even been given to you. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people receiving a lot of things. But in general, if people do attack people of any race just because they're a race, it's ridiculous. Yeah. That's what I think. Hmm. Well, people, I mean, I think all these too, on the I think some basis, people individual feel actions. that it didn't happen in their era while they were alive. Mm-hmm. So it's like, eh, I don't really care. It See, to those to those people with that mindset, I would want them. See, that's what I'm saying. That's the one thing about Candace Owens, right? That I do really like, because oh, the thing that she's oh, doing oh. is she's opening the ear of the one that might actually be subtly contributing to the oppression on the low, because she's making them seem like I actually agree with most of what you're saying. I agree with most of it, but then she gets into like, let's talk about how slavery is still affecting black people today. Yeah. And then you're willing to listen already because she already made you feel like she usually sees things from your point of view. But then you're like, oh shit. It doesn't matter that I didn't do anything. There's still mad ways that I'm inheriting the benefits of this thing. And there's still mad ways that others are getting the short end of the stick from this thing. And what can I do to help? You know what I mean? Like there's people, and I'm not here to tell people what they should or shouldn't do. I just want to point out what some people do do. So like Jesse Itzler, Jesse Itzler and his wife, they are billionaires. They go, huh. they make sure that they not only support black businesses every single week, they post about it. We support black businesses. We make it a, a conscious effort to do that. You know what I mean? It's like a being aware of, hey, I got a crazy head start. It's not saying that you should have white guilt, but you should have some white guilt. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) You should have some kind of survivor's remorse, especially if you was playing on rookie and and your brother is playing on all Madden. You know what I mean? I feel like for me as a human being, if I see somebody homeless or something, if I got it, you got it. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling bad, man. Yeah, I feel like you're supposed to care about humans, yo. Like, socialism has, like, such a negative connotation. People hate that word. Like, you're the worst person ever. You're talking socialist concepts. And I'm like, what is wrong with caring about each other? <laughs> this this <laughs> sounds like a great That's idea. Cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> love your neighbor as you love yourself. I'm all about that. That, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Right, right. But, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like... uh we're all just getting better, though. I do. I do feel like that. I do feel like we're, we're at at the end of the day, we're all going to get towards what America was supposed to be. Yeah. So we might have to get some of these older uh, <laughs> these old people up out of there first. But <laughs> will we be alive to see it? We may not. We're, probably we're, not. We're not. I don't think we'll be here for the full fruition of because it's going to never stop moving forward yeah you know what i mean i think it'll always continue to get better 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 people will continue to get more and more more aware because like somebody said i don't remember who said it but like there's no such thing as darkness darkness is just the absence of light so the more light gets continues to shine on the dark areas the parts that people aren't looking at you know what i mean the more perspective is introduced through art through conversation through content the more we start to realize what's true to us, what resonates with our souls and what doesn't. But right, right. I love the world that we're living in because I thought about something Martin Luther King said. When, everybody heard this junk. When he said, I have a dream that one day people will be judged by the content of their character. And I felt like so blown away by that quote, thinking about that in the context of 2020 when everybody's avatar, everybody's character is producing content. Ooh. And it's like, that's what we have to judge you off of. We have to judge what you put out to the world in the form of content, whether it's your words on text, your words in audio, your words on video, your art. That's what we're judging you. What other people say about you, your reputation, but it's all the content. That's why I get a little bit worried when you're not controlling the content. 
You know what I'm saying? You're not. Yeah, yeah definitely. You didn't have, that's you know, you what didn't we want, to talk about. That's the right. one thing, because it's so easy to sabotage people with testimonials and people talking and saying you did stuff and putting <clears> the right music behind it and the B-roll of you putting your arm around a kid in slow motion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's how you get popping. We got people looking crazy out here, man. Ooh. So long story short, I still don't know if R. Kelly did anything. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch the series or the movie or whatever. But we seen the movie. I've been saying I'm trying this. to believe in them, man. I'm trying to see the highest. I'm I didn't watch the highest thoughts about I didn't trying watch to assume the best. What which are you is doing? Mad disrespectful to the victim. Yeah, I'm always jumping in. Bye bye. Yo, without being disrespectful to the victims, the alleged victims of Michael Jackson, I'm trying to believe that shit ain't true. <laughs> Yo, you can try to believe anything, but the facts is the facts. We see. We don't them. know the facts. Is it the facts? Is it the facts though? That's what I'm saying, Robert. Man, we is see. It the we just learn the truth from the false in this world. They didn't have the technology to put face grafting. On Robert Kelly when he was when we was watching the video, bro, no, that was him. I didn't and see. I was. I would tell you know. another way we knew it was him because his like, brother. He told his brother oh, to go get the he door. He had different hairstyles that, he, <laughs> that we've seen him in. He had the low cut Caesar joint, had the bald head, and he had the braids. Yo, what's his brother's name? He told his brother to go answer the door one time in the video. Yeah. You remember that? I remember that one. That was, I was a, like, yo. I think that's that was gonna, an office or something. He sung it, it and everything. He was like, answer the door. <laughs> no, he didn't. I was like, yo, that's Kels. He did. <laughs> answer the door. <laughs> oh, you wild for that one. Man, R. Kelly, man. Answer the door. But see, I still love him, though. Period. Look at the music. Yeah, yeah, we you ain't got no R. Kelly. Uh, I'm not gonna. Oh. We, we didn't ban his music at all. But what about Michael Jackson, man? Y'all, y'all gonna tell me that's truth too, man? What? Yo, uh, yo, Michael truth? Jack. We don't know if that's true or not. Man, I'm still listening to Michael Jackson. What? Yo, I ain't gonna know. Got some suspect lyrics though. Yeah, I'm everybody de- got suspect lyrics. Yo, his lyrics are super. Yo, his first line of his song was "Your butt is mine." Oh, um, you know that was slang back then, man. Your butt is mine. He made it slang. Yo, that's who the problem right there. Yo, the first time that was heard, that was like in the semi-pro when they saw the alley for the first time. It was like, what the F was that? <laughs> that was slang Your in the Your butt 80s. is mine. At first, everybody said. Uh, <laughs> and they said, this must be like a cool new slang. Let's, let's go with it. Y'all crazy. And it he, was slang. he was definitely talking about that little boy. Oh, I hope not, oh, man. I'm just saying. I'm man. Just saying. Oh. I love Michael Jackson with all due respect. I don't think he ever did nothing like that. Yo, you let your uh, girls go get babysit by? I don't have to even consider that. But if you had to, only you one babysitter. In the world. You, you and if I was there, you're not gonna be there. You ba- she, he babysit. No, bro, that's weird. <laughs> so you're never gonna get a babysitter. No. Not that I don't know. Come on, it's Mike, man. We all know Mike. <laughs> I don't Do know we? Mike. <laughs> I don't even know Mike. <laughs> what you talking about, man? You flipped it on me. <laughs> we all know Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Man, I'll Yo, quit. I'm not judging good. nobody. That's the beauty of it all. <clears throat> I don't have to judge nobody. Yeah, just don't make them babysitters. <laughs> He ain't gonna be my babysitter though. But speaking of controlling content, Twenty One Savage, Tory Lanez, playlists. That's Ooh. what we talk about. Look how look how powerful the playlist is. I was looking at. Uh, I think I think Tory Lanez did thirty eight thousand first week. No playlist support. No, obviously, no radio support. No, no support from any banners or anything on Apple Music uh, title or whatever. Right. Uh, 21 Savage. I don't know no one who... I know a bunch of people who heard Tory's album, but I don't know nobody 
who listened to 21 Savage's album and he's doing almost 200K. All playlist report, I mean, um, support. I don't even drop. Um, banners everywhere. Yeah. Is it is it okay for the DSPs to do that? That's Bro, my question. DSPs are the new record label. And is honestly, it okay? in my <laughs> opinion, there's nobody really policing them like that. So they can really do whatever they want. They can. I know they can, but I'm saying they can invest in and bet on whoever they want, and we have no way of of monitoring if they're. Being All right, so we're just saying we're just saying we're just saying morally, do you or or do you do you think they should have that power? That's what I'm saying. Or is it on some yo? They have the power. People have the power we give them. Yo, period. Wow. So it is what it is. They have it because we gave it. If we want it back, we have we'd have to take it back. You know I what I'm saying? Know about that. I don't know about that. That's what I think, yo. People accept whatever they're told. To, like for example, Instagram. Instagram went from yo, this is an open source or whatever. This is just a free platform. Everybody be on. You see this content when it's posted. That's what it is. Everybody started doing amazing shit up there. Then everybody started, I, I had an analogy like, yo, it's almost like the people who made Instagram built like this giant trampoline in the park. And then people just started jumping on the trampoline, doing flips and all types of shit. Then people all crowded around the trampoline and started watching people do flips on this trampoline. And then this dude, without telling the people on the trampoline, went and started selling tickets for people to watch the people on the trampoline and never cut them in on it for doing the flips. And then we all found out, yo, they're charging people to advertise around this content that we're getting people to come here for, you know what I mean, collectively. Um, they're not giving us nothing for this. And they're like, damn. Oh, and you know what else? They're not even going to let your audience see your content no more. Like, they, they're going to start not even letting it just be open to the public no more. They're actually going to only let a few people show up. Like, you know what I mean? A few free tickets, but for the most part, you're going to have to pay for your audience to see you flip on the thing. It just doesn't make no sense, yo. It's like all this money came out of nowhere from content creators making stuff and generating attention. And then the content creators never got cut in. Not a dollar. Not like, oh, I got 20 million views on, on, on Instagram now. All these eyes are here because 40 million people are on Instagram every day because Drake's putting content. This person put, you know what I mean? They're, they're for the people they, that, that they actually are influenced by. And the influencers don't make no bread. And then they're supposed to just be happy. Well, at least you got a channel on this network, nigga. And it's like... <laughs> yeah, and I think that they... Long I think story that... short, you tolerate whatever they tell you to tolerate. Whatever you tolerate. You feel me? Like, we we just tolerate anything. We didn't say, oh, well, we out then. We'll make our own Instagram where people will see our content when we That's post That's what I'm it. saying. But this is one of those times where the people could make a decision. You get what I'm saying? They're going to. That's the point. <laughs> Oh, you're saying that's what you're saying. The point is the DSTs are going to do keep being able to do increasingly more and more ridiculousness because nobody's going to challenge it. Everybody's going to continue to let them do whatever they want. They decided out of nowhere, yo, 1,500 streams, we'll count that as an album. Nobody said, why? How did we come up with this number? Did we have a, did an artist (laughs) union vote on how much before we count an album set? Like, it wasn't even like a collective bargaining agreement with the NFL, like how much revenue share. And everybody's, and everybody's just like, y'all just told us what we get. And then we said, all right. And every uh, DSP got different payouts for different things for no reason. Like everybody got their own little metric. Exactly. When it, And nobody asked the artist, but we all said, checkbox, send it to all the platforms. It's, yeah. You know what I mean? That them build it. Let them do it on our website. Want. They decide what we're worth. They decide what our music is worth. They decide what our art is worth. They decide who's going to see it, who's not going to see it, unless we decide to say, "Here's the money. Put me on the playlist. Here's the money. Put me on the feature page. Here's the money. At, run my ads to this audience. Here's the money." You know what I'm saying? Yo, Drake drop his next album on Drake.com. Gonna change the world. <laughs> Drake. It would exclusively. Yeah. It would, but people, that's what I'm saying. You need people like, but this is the thing. It's, this is the thing. The people like Drake are fed so much so they never do that. You know what I'm saying? The people who have enough power will never have a reason to do it. And you they don't even really be using those, the, like the Instagram. They don't use it like that. 
they they just use it. They just have a Instagram, but they're not sitting there creating content for that platform. And it seems like Instagram feed off of the little, you know, the little guys that's using their 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 platform to create content to create a following, so they can eventually sell something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then that's what it's turned into. It used to just be like organic, which was beautiful. Now it turned into a, a system, a game of a marketing engine. You know what I mean? It became some stupid shit to me. I hate all of it, but I use them all too. I appreciate them in, in a way too. Don't get it twisted. I'm not like, I hate you. You know what I mean? I'm just like, whatever, yo. I just want to be able to reach my audience. You know what I'm saying? It's like so hard. It's ridiculous, yo. If you do the email thing, because there's so many people now competing for your audience, for people, everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Even if you got their emails because they genuinely wanted to get your emails, it still might end up in their spam. It's still going to be a 10, 15% open rate via email. Now you got to get their phone number, but now everybody's trying to get their phone number. So we're all, only a couple of years from that being too spammed out too. You know what I'm saying? No, I think my phone already spammed out, man. I be getting all type of text messages from Dean Graciosi, daggone uh, <laughs> Tony Robbins. They all be See, I don't do none of them junk, yo. I don't have, so I don't, I don't know, but I know there's people that are doing it. You know what I'm saying? I definitely did it. It's t- it's tough, man. It's uh, Sometimes it's discouraging, but you know what I watched that was mad encouraging? What? Cobra Kai. Ooh, that's your fire. He's a karate school. And the dude told him he had to play the episode, the episode you probably didn't see it. But the dude was fishing on the beach. And he was like, yo. And he reminded him of, of uh, Mr. Miyagi. He thought he was Mr. Miyagi for a second. And then he was like, oh, shoot, it's a whole different dude. But then he still had the gem for him. And the gem was like, he was like, damn, you having a tough time, no fish? And he looked at it because he had no fish. He said, yeah, but. I mean, I had good bait or whatever. He was like, when you got, so they'll eventually bite. He's like, when you got something good, the people will find you. The fish will come to you. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, the fish will come to you. And he took it as, yo, my karate school, I know I'm teaching them something that's right, whatever. Eventually, like your vibe will attract a tribe type thing. Eventually, they'll find you. It'll break, it'll make its way through the noise if it's really to that. And that's the thing everybody says to just bet on that eventually, it will break through. You just keep being consistent, which is the most powerful thing in all these marketing things. Consistency. Um, and eventually, episode forty, right? Out. A new, a new, a new, um, a new platform will emerge, or a new algorithm shift. At some point, it's gonna be to your advantage, and you'll be able to capitalize. You just gotta keep having faith and keep being consistent, and keep allowing yourself to create really dope stuff. So that's my encouragement for the artists out there trying to break through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to TMF um backslash Jimmy Soul. Backslash. Yes. Yeah. Where we at on where we at on time, Mike? Both of them. Hour and four. Oh dang. Kinda... But that's oh, like yeah. a lot of extra. So yeah, yeah, we were, so, yeah, do your list, yo. Do your one gotta go. I like that. I mean hold on, hold on. You got you got a shout out? You want to do shout outs first or yeah, let's do shout outs. Okay. Yeah, I want to shout out the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, for losing though? You shout no, out a no. loss? Nah, because I see the I see the potential. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Shout I out see to Odell Beckham, man. The potential. Yo, Odell sauced them up. Dak sauced them up. Everybody got sauced up. That's mad sauce. <laughs> Sorry, Yo, that's- shout out to Tom Brady, man. <laughs> Yo, he literally, if he keeps this up, I'm actually going to have to be like, yo, it wasn't Bill Belichick. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth. I might have to say it. I ain't saying it yet. But shit. You you might have to. He's been balling, bro. I'm like, yo, he out here making me really think differently, yo. Now I feel like real, a hater. Real, real shout out. Real shout out. I want to shout out my boy, uh, my boy Mozart. He's a uh, he's a producer, you know. He's a he's a dad, he's a real good dude. Um, just want to give him a good shout out. He uh, he is one of these artists that's really trying to be super independent. Got his own website, put his album on his website only. You know, trying to build his following like that. 
um super dope guy he's um uh the the music director at 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 one of the churches i used to go to that's how i met him but he but he had a stint with a uh, red zone and tricky and uh Ooh. in the dream um so he's he's a professional but i just want to give him a big 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 shout out shout out to you my g <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Right. I want to give a shout out to my homegirl, Amanda Nitza. I ain't going to say her, her real last name, but she's on Instagram as Amanda Nitza. I was in the Navy with her. She uh, She's doing her thing as a model. She's a real activist for like sheltering dogs, like homeless dogs and things like that. She's a real activist. Like, she's out there. Like she out there. She adopted like three or four pits. Like she really out there though. She's doing her thing, man. Always show love. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to you. Go follow her at Amanda Nitza on Instagram. Holla. Shout out to Bronco Gang, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it is. Marcos! We in here. We in here. <laughs> Definitely. Shout out to Bronco Gang. They won't let me in. They won't let me in. Nah. Of course not. not. How's that happening? You mean, of, of course not. Look what you I put in so head. much work for Bronco Gang. <laughs> I'm about to start pulling my card, yo. Uh, uh, I'm about to have to make me a blue and gray flag. <laughs> yo, we're literally making a blue and gray flag. <laughs> just text me that. No. It's, it's a blue and grayish camouflage joint for the... um. Ooh, there you go. In November. There One gotta go. go. What up? All right, this is a nostalgic one got to go. This is, just think about it as if you were in high school, okay? Think about it as if you were in high school. Don't think about it as right now, okay? I don't remember when I was in high school. Yes, you do. Trust me, when I when I name it, you're going you're gonna to remember. Okay, all right. Nostalgic one got to go. Fitteds, Thames, mm. white Air Force Ones, and 44 waist jeans. AKA <laughs> that one. <laughs> 44 waist jeans, bro. Are we joking here? That was a oh, that was that was a style. That yeah. was a style. Nah, that gotta go. That yeah, definitely gotta go. You wear <laughs> <laughs> Tim's are still out here. The fit yeah, we always cool. wearing the jeans. Man. Yo, Drew still wear 44 waist <laughs> waist jeans. <laughs> the shots have been fired. <laughs> I know no. your wardrobe, son. Uh, <laughs> I mean, not far from it. Not far from it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, them 44 waist jeans got to go. I remember looking at some old pictures. Extra big. <laughs> Stupid, man. What were we thinking? Bruh. Oh, extra big, Pictures. I'm like, bruh. And still sagging. We could have fit And still sagging. We could have fit another ver- another one of us in our outfit. I can't even imagine putting the things on now. They like, had space. Yo, real talk. I had some like big sweatpants, right? <laughs> that I just kept from like when I was younger. I'm talking about they super big. They still too big for me now, right? We <laughs> I was wearing them one day just around the house, right? And my kids was playing hide and seek. I literally hid. Madison in the leg of my sweatpants, bro. And then the? hit Layla in the other leg and just sat th- at the table and act like I was just eating. And Destiny, Destiny just can't find them. I Yo, love to play hide and seek when you can't, when they can't find you. That's crazy. That's the best. Yo, they gotta go. Them jeans gotta go. Uh, coachable moment. I just want to read one of these quotes uh, from uh, Bruce Lee's website. <laughs> Bruce Lee got the L website. <laughs> it's, it's not it. his website. But Yo, it's Bruce's website, website, bro. <laughs> uh, hold on. Let me, let me bad find. gems, bro. He has stupid gems. The one, the one you posted was the one that caught my eye, too, uh, at the beginning. But then I started digging. Uh-oh. Huh? Yeah, let me let me find it. Let me find it. (laughs) 
Ooh, all right. So it says, do not pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength to endure, endure a difficult one. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Whoa. I saw that one too. And I was like, <laughs> Yo, that's standing there right out the Bible, right there. That's a yeah, word. I definitely think about what me and you always talk about, Drew, um, playing life on all Madden. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, and how yeah. how it how it feels when you conquer that versus playing it on easy, and you just you just you know it just is what it is, and don't even feel good. So I I definitely wanted to just say like you know even if you're going through trials and tribulations now. Just know that you pl- you playing life on all Madden, yo, and it's going to it's going to end up being a great victory, um, in the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So that's the coachable moment. Shout out to Bruce Lee. He, he be having some quotes, boy. He be having some real quotes. Jimmy Soul gave me that too, yo. Not the mad fanatic who we talking to right now. <laughs> and the game that's woke as Jimmy Soul. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a lost cause, man. Nah, right. man. You got any uh plugs or anything for um you probably plug uh cause fifty one stuff oh, like yeah, that. Man. Go ahead. Go support my cause fifty one campaign. Cause fifty one org forward slash TMF. I'm, i launched a platform called Cause Fifty One for artists to um work with their audiences to help raise money and awareness for causes they believe in. Um, the cause I chose to use my content to raise money for is Feed Our Vets. It's a dope organization that feeds homeless veterans in America. I know what you're thinking. There shouldn't be homeless veterans in America. That's ridiculous. And I was thinking the same thing. So that's why I chose them yeah. as my cause. That's the same. So go check out the campaign, cause51.org forward slash TMF. <laughs> All right, Mike, man, get us up out of here, bro. All right, man. Y'all ain't fucking with us. Send your own podcast.